Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be having some fun with panel rex. What's panel rex? Well, as you know, in ISPF we have this beautiful panels, just like the one we are seeing right now in my terminal emulator, um, such as, for instance, um, any of these things, these panels you see here, these uh, interactive dialogues, they're all panels. And, uh, and and there's a lot of things you can do with panels. They have really evolved a lot over the last 20 years or so from the very simple and humble beginnings of ISPF uh, about 35 years ago when I started using ISPF. So there's very sophisticated things you can do. One of the things that's really interesting to me is that you can run Rex inside a panel and that's called like it's procedural Rex. So the panel itself invokes Rex. Most of the examples that you see around, such as the one in my previous video, or well, there's also a video on this channel called uh, Rex Panels by Sebastian. Uh, most of the examples, they invoke the panels from within Rex. So you, everything starts with the Rex program. The Rex program starts up and invokes a panel, gets some input and output, and then gets the variables back, such in my previous video. Um, I think it's M143. You will see that uh, the Rex program calls the panel, reads the values that the, pur the user puts in, in the fields and then processes those and then uh, can uh, can transform the data or, or invoke another panel. And that's all nice and dandy, but very often what actually happens is that the user may enter from within um, the main panel, such as this one, right? And so you don't actually want to call a Rex program, you want to invoke a panel. And then you want to have the, within the panel the option then you want to do some processing from within the panel. And so that is possible because uh, IBM has also has something called panel Rex, which means that you do all the processing, everything within the panel, and you never actually have to leave the panel, and the panel is not invoked by Rex or any program. Everything that happens is all within the panel. And I think, to me, this is uh, interesting and fascinating, and I thought we could write a little program a little panel actually that will uh, take um, a message and a and the TSO user and then send the TSO uh, send command to that user so as you're aware if I go to I can do send hello then to user milkshakes uh, now no wait and if I do that, it will send the message to the to user Moshix. I could also send, if I'm authorized, the user to the console. But uh, that's kind of the message where, and people can message each other. And back in the days when we had several thousand people on the mainframe and you wanted to go uh, down to the cafeteria to have lunch, uh, we would just send each other messages like this, like, you know, uh, uh, ready for lunch and user, you know, I don't know, uh, Jean, and then I would, would do that, and then uh, she would then say down in five uh, or something like that, right? And so I would get the message back. The thing is, it interrupts the flow of uh, the panels, but the next time you press enter, you will write back where you were before. So a lot of people will actually miss these messages if they press enter too fast. But that's not the scope of this video. In this video, we're just going to write a panel. And, uh, and have fun doing that. Um, so I will, um, I will start here and, and uh, start to write the panel and then at some point I will switch to accelerated mode so you don't, have, you don't get bored watching me program. So in my system, I'm on ZOS 2.3, the panels are in user Z23 ISP um, panels uh, it's a panel library right so and why don't we go and create this is the panel from my previous uh, video on this channel where we sent emails from within ISPF and so now we're going to go create a new panel so we do it like this user z23c ISP lib, and we call it message and and so as you know as you can see here uh, things start with panel 
So that's how you tell it that it's a panel. And then you have attributes and you define several attributes. So for instance, in my case, I want to define attribute PT is means panel title. And I want to define percentage to mean uh, uh, emphasize text. text and then we can have type and T would then be normal text forgive my spelling and then we have type and F means uh, normal field, etc. So we can take some of the examples that um, IBM has some good examples here, but uh, we're going to do our own uh, thing here. So I'll move this away so that it won't bother us. Maybe I'll move this stuff away too so it won't bother you. Alrighty. So um, I'll switch now to accelerated um, recording so it won't get too boring. And then we'll discuss uh, the program that I typed in. So I'll switch also the music to something uh, more entertaining.
Okay, uh, finished typing is in. It's it's quite tedious because it's um, unfamiliar syntax to me. But let's see. Uh, we could go to the panel panel test uh, dialog and go here. Primary option for dialog test. We go here to number two panels. There's one. I'm typing the name of the panel. Of course, it needs to. Uh, ISPF needs to be able to find it, but my user panel library is the one I mentioned before, so... Oops, there is something wrong here. Um, oh yeah, okay. I think I know what this is. Not proc, but proc for procedure. So then, uh, we save this. And I get into a moment of what we've what we have here, what the source code does. Okay, perfect. So we have our little panel here. Uh, here's where you type the message, like "Hello, hello, ready for lunch," and then you put in uh, I don't know uh, matrix. Um, oops. And then you would say, you can go to menu and say send, or, oh yeah, um, you put in send, you can either type in send here or take it from the menu. That's why these menus are kind of sometimes helpful, or we can do without the menus and just then you have to know what you're going to type. But if you don't know, you can just go to menu and then select one, right? So. So that was cancel. If I select one, then it will send. Okay, and then we have a little bit of error checking. If there is no message, uh, message field is empty. Yo. If we have a message, but no user, we'll say TSO user field is empty. And if we have a TSO user field that's too long, uh, well, in this case, actually we catch the length here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, it should be one more, but uh, it should be here. But let's, if you do it like this, then there will be nine fields here. And TSO uh, usernames cannot be more than eight uh, characters in the new TSO versions as of ZOS 2.2, I think. So let's try this out. Uh, so if I now put in yeah, T is so user field is too long, dude. So, um, but of course it can only be eight. So we can limit it here and we save it. And that's the nice thing about the panel dialog, uh, the, the panel test feature. You can have two windows open and then you can just test very easily. Okay, and uh, So to, yeah, so this works. Uh, now let me show you, and it's a nice, like it looks like a very normal uh, TSO panels that we know from all the other panels in, in ISPF. But the good thing is that all the processing is done within this panel, so there is no calling of other programs. And so let's go through this. Uh, here we establish the various styles. It's almost like the CSS, the uh, cascading style sheets for HTTP or HTML, sorry. Um, then we have here, we create the menus with the sub options, uh, send, end, and cancel. Uh, we also have a help menu, uh, I'll show it later. And here's the body of the panel itself. So we show dollar, of course, as we say here is action bar. So it creates an action bar on the top, like similar to this ones here. They are created exactly the same way, this ones here, right? That will be something that creates them. And, um, and then we have, um, so under them we have a line similar to this one. And then we have a name here, Just it's just text, it could be Mickey Mouse. And then here we have an, uh, the command uh, field. And maybe it helps if I just invoke the panel again. So then we, I can point you where this is. So, so here, this message here obviously is this one, right? Um, so 
if we change it. So here it is now. Um, then we have here the field where we ask for the message to be put in, this one. And the input goes into the variable called MSG. And then we ask for the TSO recipient and the, and the input from the user is going to go into variable TSO user. And then here we have, we define a procedure and that's the interesting part. So here's where uh, panel recs starts to get active. So we define a procedure within the panel. That's why I call those procedural panels. And we call recs and we call recs uh, with these two variables, uh, message um, and TSO user. So we can do some plausibility tests and then, then we disable trace. We make uh, the this command here is zcmd, we transform it into uppercase so we don't have to do too many checks. And then we say if the message is empty, then complain about it. We can also remove this line here. Um, then if the TSO user, this is kind of like or, if the message is empty then there's or, if the TSO user is empty then complain about it. If the length of the TSO user field is more than eight for modern versions of uh, of uh, ZOS, then say that it's too long. Although, of course, we can delimit it here. This is the limiter. This is the plus here says how long the field is. All right, so if we move it here, now the message can be a little bit longer. Now, if then we check if the command that's in the panel, either by selecting the menu here or by typing directly send, if it says send and the message is not empty, this means not. It's like kind of the PL1 not. If if the mess if if it the command says to send the message and the message is not empty and the TSO user is not empty, then we uh, say a short uh, message that we're sending a message, and now we invoke uh, TSO commands, and then we prepare the command TSO send. That's a TSO send command with the payload of the message to the user and the username. Now, no way, it's sent immediately. And uh, and that's it, that is done. And then we have one more thing. If it says, in, if the command instead is canceled, then we just exit. Uh, same for, we could do the same for end. Uh, and so this is the end of the Rex invocation. So now we exit panel Rex and the panel ends here. So this is a self-contained panel that includes everything that we need to do to process this. So as you can see, um, this works just fine. Now let's go see where we can include this panel. I would like to have it as part of the main menu here. Oops. So uh, this menu here that I have adopted from an IBM menu I found somewhere on an IBM mainframe um, years ago works for me and has, has all the important abbreviations and so I don't have to go to the next panel like with M like you have on the on the default ISPF panel so it's just faster especially because I usually work with uh, larger screens anyway so this panel here that you see is called the ISPF PRE prime menu this one so uh, where do we find this we go here I put an ADCD in my case and here it is so now this is the panel that you were just seeing a moment ago and you can recognize it from here right now here what we're going to do is we're going to put one more option MS send messages to TSO users. Okay, um, quick and dirty, doesn't have to be beautiful right now, just to give you an idea. And then here's where the selection happens, like right? Z command, just like our own panel here. So let me put it towards the end here, somewhere here. Uh, and it's MS panel message that's all we have to type because uh, it's in the 
almost like in, in Unix or Linux would be like in the path for the panel. So if I just type panel in the correct name message uh, and then choice MS from the primary menu from ISPF prime, we'll then go find this panel. That's all we need to do. Of course, you want to make sure you don't have any mistakes or spellers or, or errors in this panel because otherwise you won't be able to uh, go to the main panel. You have to go start uh, editing without having the main panel. But I think this is correct. Well, we'll find out. And you can see here, this itself is just a panel like the one we just saw, right? And it has a procedure, just like the one we created ourselves. So nothing special here. Okay. Um, I think we have to go back into ISPF to see the option. Yes, so here it is. I've actually never done this. Um, let's see what happens. Yes, so I can now say send test from YouTube. Yes, this works. Um, there's a tiny little, yeah, it doesn't know how to get back. Why we can fix this, but anyway, so it's just add PF3 and it returns. So now we added a, an extension to our uh, main panel. Uh, we see how to create procedural panels where all the handling is done within the panel. And so we don't have to invoke any program in C or PL1 or Assembler or Rex to invoke the panel. The panel itself is procedural and contains uh, everything that it needs to do to process a user input because there is a thing called panel recs. Uh, I think that the, the possibilities are huge um, for panel recs. I, I myself didn't know about this until a short, uh, short time ago. I want to thank for this video, especially Sebastian, because uh, we did some trials on his mainframe at, uh, in Germany at Leip the University of Leipzig. And also Peter Jacob, who helped me figure out the quotes, the single quotes, double quotes for the TSO send command within the Rex script. Uh, if you have any questions about how to get this done, this thing's done, then please uh, leave some comments. I will also be posting the source code of this panel in the description below this video so you can play with it. And uh, if you like this video, do press on the thumbs up button. Always uh, motivated motivates me to do more videos and see you soon again. Thank you. Bye.